Well, welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to answer some questions about distance in rasters. And the main tool we're going to use is the Euclidean distance tool. And if we look at help with Euclidean distance tool, so tool help, they give you a cartoon. So the tool works with any cell that has values. What is the distance? So if you're in a cell that has a value, the distance is zero. If you're in a no data cell, what's the distance to a cell that has values? So for example, if I'm sitting in this cell, so for example, if I'm sitting in this cell, the distance is zero. And if the cell size is one, then if I'm sitting in this cell, the distance is 1.0. Along the diagonal, the distance would be 1.41. So along the diagonal would be from the center of the cell to the center of that cell. So the first thing we'll have to do is create a raster that has values and no data, because if every cell has a value, then it would just return a, a distance of zero for every cell. So let's start with our test raster, and we'll create another raster that has some no data cells. So we can use the con tool. So we'll keep the pixel values if the question's true. If the question's false, we'll make those cells no data. And then we need to come up with some expression. So let's do an expression value in a set of choices and then we'll just arbitrarily pick some choices. So let me say 5, 33, 88, and 99 just as an example. So our query is, is the value in this set of choices 5 or 33 or 88 or 99? If it is, keep the value of 5, 33, 88, or 99. If it's not, make it no data. So there's our output. So then what we might want to know is, well, what's the distance to any cell that has a value? So we can use the Euclidean distance tool to calculate that distance. So our input raster is the raster that contains no data, and then our output will contain our distances, and then the output cell size will be the same as the input cell size. So let's change the symbology of our raster differences. So if we go right mouse click properties, and then symbology, let's do a stretched and then we'll pick the hotter the color, the greater the distance, the cooler the color, the less the distance. And then a background value of zero, let's assign that a black. So you notice our original pixels all are black. They have a value of zero. And as we get further and further away from our original pixels, the color gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So for example, for this pixel, it's got a distance of 63.24. And for this neighboring pixel, it's got a distance of 10 because it's a distance of 10 between the center of this pixel and the center of that pixel. So let's add our points and then we could check these distances. So if we add our points to our data frame from our test raster, they were points. And then let's define our data frame property units as meters. And that way we could use the measure tool to measure what the distance is in meters between any points. So then we could use the measure tool, which is the ruler. So for example, what's the distance between the lower left-hand corner point so we snap to that point, 
and this point in the pixel that had data. So the distance is 36.05 meters. So then if we use the identify tool, we could ask the same thing in the raster world. So we'll turn off our points. So for this pixel, what's the distance to the closest black pixel? And it is 36.5 meters. So for our original test raster, we might want to know what's the distance for every pixel to any pixel in our second raster that has a value. So for example, this would be a distance of 0, this would be a distance of 10, this would be a distance of 20, etc. So what we could do is we have this raster of distances. We can use the combine tool to say, okay, for every pixel, for every different value, find the appropriate raster distance. So that's the combine tool. So we're going to combine our original raster with the raster that we calculated distances. And then I name my output raster combine output raster. So then if we look at the attribute table of our combine output raster, the object ID we don't need, so I'll turn that off. The value is actually first combination, sixth, second combination, third combination, etc. So that's not really important, so we could turn that off. But here we have for every value in our original raster, what was the distance to a pixel that had a value. So for example, let's label our original points with their object IDs, because that's what the raster values are made of. So label based on object ID. And then let's look at the output raster table. So for example, if we sort or sort ascending, the pixel that had a value of 1 is 36 away from a pixel in terms of raster distances from our four pixel raster we got our distances from. So let's change the properties of that field to two to the right of the decimal. So the distance is a distance of 36 and using the measure tool it really should be 36.05. So that's one of the weaknesses of the combine tool is it rounds the values from floating point values to whole number values. So instead we could use the raster calculator. So we could say is the test value greater than zero and if it is that will return a one and then multiply that by the raster distance. And I'll output that to a raster named all raster distances. So then if I use the identify tool, what is the value inside that pixel? It is 36.05. So now we have for every pixel in our original test raster, what is the distance to one of these four pixels? So what's the distance to this pixel? It's zero because we're sitting in that pixel. And then if we're one pixel away, the distance is 10. If we're two pixels away, the distance is 20, etc.